Hello, my name is Vanessa. I'm a physician assistant in hand surgery. Evaluating a lacerated hand can seem daunting, so we wanted to review. This is not an exhaustive review of wound closure. The focus is to review the exam of possible injured structures beneath the skin, thus determining the need for urgent follow-up with hand surgery versus a 10 to 14 day follow-up with a primary care provider for suture removal. It is important to inspect the wound. First, we need to stop the bleeding, achieve hemostasis, and inspect the wound. But one common misconception is that we treat the patient based on what we see in the wound. Rather, we determine treatment based on the exam, what's working and what's not. If the patient is having a lot of pain, consider giving them an oral pain medicine or placing a cold pack about the elbow or in the armpit proximal to the area of injury. That will help with pain because first we need to examine the hand. We need to evaluate what's working and what's not. Then we can administer, administer the digital block. The digital block, uh, after you've done that, then you can remove any foreign body that you see, flush out the wound with saline. Uh, some literature uh, is supporting tap water even for flushing out a wound. And then uh, begin your suturing. You can see the how-to video on digital block to perform the simple technique, which makes performing the digital block for the provider simple and also simple for the patient. It is most effective, especially when you allow it to set up for 20 minutes. So enjoy this video as we review examination of the lacerated hand. Now you can practice on yourself before you have a patient in front of you. Put your hand on the table and do blocking first for the PIP joint. So hold down all of the fingers except the one you want to test and bend at the first joint, that PIP joint. You can see how just that joint moves. That's FDS tendon. You could test another finger. Hold down all the fingers but one and bend at the PIP. That's FDS tendon of the PIP joint. Now for blocking of the DIP joint to test FDP tendon, we hold down all the fingers except for the one joint we want to test. So for the ring finger DIP joint, I'm blocking up all the way to the middle phalanx of ring finger to test the DIP joint motion. That tells me FDP tendon is intact. We need to test both FDS and FDP tendons to each finger that's injured. When we have an evaluation for a lacerated hand, we need to do several things. We need to make sure the patient is comfortable, so that usually means a digital block. We need to irrigate the wound with saline. That does not mean rest the hand in a bowl of water, but use a syringe to flush saline through the wounds after we've done the digital block. But prior to all that, we need to evaluate the hand. We need to determine what's working and what's not. Are the flexor tendons working? Are the digital nerves working? So that's where the laceration exam comes into place. In addition to evaluating the tendons, we need to determine are the nerves working? Can you feel me touching on the radial side of the small finger? Can you feel me touching on the ulnar side of the small finger? If they cannot feel this, but they can feel this, that is concern for ulnar digital nerve injury of the small finger. Same thing for the ring finger. If they cannot feel this on the ulnar side of ring, but they can feel this on the radial side of ring, that's concern for ulnar digital nerve injury of the ring finger. Then it's time to evaluate the tendons. So before we begin evaluating the hand with the lacerations, we want to show the patient what we're going to do with their uninjured hand. Let's see your other hand. I'm gonna hold down all of the fingers but one. So you can see I'm holding down the index long and small. And I want him to bend his ring finger at the first joint and straighten. We practice on another finger. Now bend the, let's do the middle finger. Bend at that first joint and straighten. That's FDS tendon. That's one of the two tendons we need to test. So now we go to the injured hand. I hold up down all the fingers but one. Bend at the first 
joint there, the PIP joint, and straighten. So we can tell that the FDS tendon is intact. Now we want to test the small finger at that first joint, and he can bend at the PIP joint, so FDS tendon is intact. Now we're going to go back to the uninjured hand to show him the other tendon we want to test. So I'm holding down all of the fingers except the ring finger where I want him to bend the DIP joint and straighten. Let's practice on another finger. So I hold down all the fingers except for the one joint I want to test, which is the DIP joint of the long finger and straighten. Now we test the injured finger. We do that so he gets an idea of what we want to do on the injured hand. I hold down all the fingers except for this end joint of the ring finger, the DIP joint, and bend. I'm going to hold that down. I probably will have gloves on, right, if he has a laceration, but I'm going to hold down over that middle phalanx and bend just the DIP joint. So this is called blocking and straighten. And now we're going to block the small finger, bend at the DIP joint, and straighten. Now, for example, if he were to try to bend the ring finger, and I did blocking like we did before, but he, as he tries to bend, and I explain that first joint, the PIP joint, he does this, that does not count. That, that flexion is involving the intrinsics of the hand. He's not bending at the PIP joint. So that does not tell me that FDS is intact. All right, now we've reviewed how to evaluate the lacerated hand. Just a note on absorbable sutures. Plain gut and monocryl are the preferred options for absorbable sutures. There are two instances in hand injuries where absorbable sutures are preferred. Those are crush injuries and pediatric patients. Both scenarios are extremely painful for the patient and also for the provider taking the sutures out if they are non-absorbable. So please consider using absorbable sutures in these cases. Okay, so if on exam all tendons and nerves are working, go ahead and suture, apply adaptic or xeriform and a bulky dressing, and follow up with our primary care provider for suture removal. However, if on your exam there is concern for tendon or nerve laceration, go ahead and suture, adaptic or xeriform, and apply a dorsal blocking splint. This will ensure that the cut ends of the structure, whether tendon or nerve, remain in close approximation to each other. Check out the how-to section for step-by-step -step instructional video for applying a dorsal blocking splint. Last but not least, place a referral to hand surgery for urgent evaluation. Thanks for watching.